A while back, I made an unboxing video where I opened up a 16 inch i7 Mobile Studio Pro. In that video, I said I'd make a review in a couple of months. In a month or two. In a month or two. In a month or two. It has been five months. Sorry about that. My apologies for the delay, but that being said, this video is that review and I promise it to be the most comprehensive and straightforward review of the Mobile Studio Pro series of not only the 16 inch, but the 13 inch as well. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this is a review of the 16 inch and 13 inch Mobile Studio Pro. Both are the i7 editions, so the top tiers of their categories. Now, first things first, full disclosure, this channel is sponsored by Wacom. But those of you who have been around for a while know that I've always loved Wacom even before they sponsored me and them being the sponsor does not in any way reflect on the things that I'll be saying in this review. If anything, they actually like that I'm really honest about my experience with my followers and with them. So you can expect this to be a really in-depth and straightforward review, both looking at the pros and the cons to the Mobile Studio Pro lineup. I will recommend to go check out their stuff with a link in the description. Wacom are genuinely the best brand of tablets out there. I can highly recommend them in general, though in this video we're going to specifically focus on the Mobile Studio Pro. I'm going to dive in deep in this video and I will focus on different things for somewhat lengthy periods of time, so I'm going to start off with my very broad review. I love my Mobile Studio Pro, the 16 inch in particular with the i7 and the graphics card. However, there are some design flaws which I'm going to address with you in this video. That being said, they are minor inconveniences as opposed to deal breakers. And I've used other tablets, whether they be standalone devices or just uh, display tablets that are deal breakers in big ways just from the functionality of it being a creative device. The Mobile Studio Pro, however, does what it needs to do exceptionally well. And there is, in my opinion, no product like it on the marketplace in either form or function. Now. Let's jump into the details. Starting off with the specifications, the Mobile Studio Pro 13 inch is almost identical in specs to the Cintiq Companion 2. It has the same screen size and resolution. The general features overall are pretty much the same. The core differences between the 13 inch Mobile Studio Pro and the Cintiq Companion 2 are the inclusion of the new Pro Pen 2, which has almost quadrupled the levels of pressure sensitivity, specifically 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. It also boasts a newer generation processor and comes with the different ports and the form factor that comes along with the new Mobile Studio Pro lineup. So in this video, I won't dive into the specs of the Mobile Studio Pro 13 inch, but I did do a very, very extensive review of the Cintiq Companion 2. In that video, I go into a lot of detail into my user experience and the details of how I used it. So go check that out if you're interested in the 13 inch model as opposed to the 16 inch model. This video is going to primarily focus on the 16 inch model, but include the 13 inch in benchmarks and other comparisons. So let's jump into the specifications of the 16 inch Mobile Studio Pro. As you would have guessed, the display is a 16 inch display, or more specifically, it's 15.6 inches, but you know, who's counting? It has a 4K resolution of 3840 by 2160, and again, boasts the Pro Pen 2 with over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. It comes with the express keys and touch controls that those of you who are familiar with them are used to on other Wacom devices. There are two models of the 16 inch tablet, one with a two gig DDR5 graphics card and another with a four gig DDR5 graphics card, which is the version that I'm using and reviewing. And along with those are of course the storage sizes, respectively also eight gig of RAM and 16 gig of RAM DDR3. The device claims four times more accuracy, virtually no lag, natural tilt support, no parallax, no batteries or recharging for the pen. And one of the main differences between the 16 inch tablet and the 13 inch tablet is that that it comes equipped with a 3D camera. The 3D camera enables you to capture real world objects and do things like speed up your design processes or 3D sculpting workflow, which makes a device like this both portable and capable of doing pretty high tier production stuff like working in ZBrush and scanning sculptures and tweaking them in 3D 
on your portable Wacom device, which is pretty crazy. I haven't specifically had experience with this feature yet, so I will do some content on that in the future. I won't make promises as to when like I did last time, but it is something I want to do and I specifically want to play with ZBrush on this thing. A Mobile Studio Pro purchase comes with the Mobile Studio Pro itself, the Pro Pen 2, a pen case with three replacement nibs, color rings and a nib removal tool, a pen holder, an AC power and power cable, a quick start guide and a cleaning cloth. Now I'm going to talk about the ports and the exterior design features of the tablet. It has your standard stuff like an SD card reader, headphone jack, an on off power switch and this is a little screen lock button which enables you to turn on or off auto rotate and then we have volume control. And they've had a pretty minimalist approach with the tablet because on the other side are three USB-C ports and that's it not including this little hole here which attaches a little pen holder which to be completely honest with you I've never actually used. So whether that's useful for you or not totally depends on your workflow. With a content lineup on this channel of three videos a week and a production value that I really like to maintain, the fact that I have a near wafer thin device to take with me anywhere that can actually keep up with that demand is nothing short of absolutely game changing. In fact, I actually plan my travels around the use of this thing. I get to airports early so I can sit there for two hours before the flight and get work done. I travel to Melbourne by train rather than by car so that I can use this thing. I get more done with this tablet and it makes my business function. And in my eyes, the only thing that would be a deal breaker would be if it doesn't allow me to do that. The fact that I have on the train edited 4K video on a device so thin it can almost fit through a mail slot in comparison to my desktop computer which I recently had to upgrade because it kept dying when trying to edit 1080p video, let alone 4K. I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> and when it comes to using this device for creativity and art, there is no comparison. With things like their shortcuts and express keys and the pressure sensitivity with the Pro Pen 2, which is really noticeable and really nice. But it facilitates my creativity in the sense that I can use peripherals and shortcuts that I've been used to on my desktop workflow and take them with me. For example, this is my Razer Orb Weaver, which I use with shortcuts to edit really fast. And I can just plug this thing on, set up Premiere and edit an entire video in the same time frame in which I would edit a video on my desktop computer. Now, all of this praise is coming from someone whose experience depends upon reliability. I need to get content made regularly and of a certain production value. So now I'm going to jump into my thoughts on the design and the form factor of the Mobile Studio Pro. Again, specifically I'm talking about the 16 inch, though the ports and pretty much all the exterior stuff is the same on both the 13 inch and the 16 inch. I'm going to start off with the elephants in the room because frankly, you can't watch a Mobile Studio Pro review anywhere without hearing these same things. First, it doesn't come with a stand. Second, it doesn't come with a case, specifically the soft carry case that the ST Companions came with. And third, the exclusive inclusion of USB-C ports. I want to address these one by one and just talk about my experience with them, but I want to start off by saying that for me, they aren't deal breakers. They were jarring at first. It's not worth discounting getting the product out of hand because of any one or all of those three things. So let's start off with the lack of stand. This is a pretty big one for me personally, or at least it was at the start, because frankly, I actually didn't use the device until I got a stand. I had it for about three weeks, and aside from registering it and, and setting it up with my programs, I never actually used it. Now, apparently Wacom have been developing a stand on their website. It's listed as an additional accessory you can get, but it's not out yet. So I'm sure they will come out with something eventually. I have two recommendations I can give to you, both of which I found to be really high quality and usable in different scenarios. Those recommendations specifically being the Kensington Easy Riser Laptop Cooling Stand and the UDG Create a Laptop Controller Stand. The Kensington Stand is light and cheap. It's about 30 bucks and it's uh, pretty durable, easy to carry on flights. I tend to find this in general more usable than the UDG Stand. However, the UDG Stand, while a bit heavy and bulky at times, is 
really flexible and it enables you to change the height adjustment and lean it in directions and places that the Kensington stand doesn't allow you to. So if you're looking for something that can really be flexible and get some really high or low angles, can be usable in very different use cases and scenarios as opposed to the Kensington stand, I would definitely recommend the UDG, but it's more expensive. So there are two options I can recommend, the cheap Kensington, which is great and I haven't had any problems with it, and the more high tier heavy duty UDG stand, which if you're looking for something that does more and is more flexible and also really heavy duty, that's definitely one I can recommend as well. Now moving on to the optional carry case that used to come with the Cintiq Companion 2 but now is an optional extra. I would recommend getting this optional extra, to be completely honest. It's obviously disappointing that you need to pay that bit more to get the stand and a case to make your usability and portability of the device really fully functional, but with the case and either of those stands that I mentioned, portability is a breeze. Now the tablet is pretty big at 16 inches and it's a wider form factor than most 16 inch laptops so it may be at times difficult to find a laptop bag that will fit the tablet. I used the optional carry case and a bag from thinkgeek.com which is called the bag of holding. I've used it for many years and it fits comfortably and I've taken it on flights, train trips, drives and everywhere. It all packs up nice and tight, it's really easy to access with the zip at the top and the bag of holding that I have has a pocket at the back which I just slot my tablet stand into. So getting my tablet out in any situation and setting it up and using it is really straightforward and enjoyable. The third design thing that I mentioned, which I wasn't entirely sure about when I first got the tablet, was the inclusion of only three USB-C ports. This seemed like a bigger problem to me when I started than it actually turned out to be. So don't let that scare you away. Now, of course, all of my peripherals and portable accessories are pretty much exclusively in USB 2 or 3. So you're going to need a USB-C to USB USB 3 dongle or docking accessory or little converter pin to make those usable, but I always carried a USB 3 dongle docking thing with my ST Companion 2 anyway. The reason for them making this choice has become pretty apparent to me over the last five months of having the device. First off, I think it's really cool that the power and charging comes in USB C form, so the fact that you can swap those around and position that or set that up however you wish with that level of simplicity I think is really cool. And of course, a lot of the new equipment that I've been getting in the last five months is USB-C. So it makes sense, especially with recent phones like the Google Pixel, various VR headsets or cameras like this one I'm using right now, the Lumix GH5. Wacom was simply future-proofing the device by making it USB-C. Yes, it adds a slight workaround now, but that workaround exists for all USB-C devices until that technology is ubiquitous. It's a superior port and technology in every way. So thumbs up there in the end, even though I was uncertain at first. The carry case for the pen is a lot smaller than the former carry case. For demonstration purposes, this is the case for the Cintiq Companion 2 <laughs> pen. And this is the carry case for the Mobile Studio Pro. As you can see, it's a bit more of a cigar form and slides out rather than opens up. It's space saving and it's more sleek feeling, but it's smaller and can roll. So just keep your eye on it. I feel like it's important when getting a device like this that you know all of the pros and cons and though I've talked through those cons, I do want to reiterate they are things where there are solutions available for them and when the solutions are found and utilized, the pros are the only things that are left and trust me, it's worth it. Because at the end of the day, this device is a creative device. It is a gutsy, powerful, art solution. It's it's hard to even describe how I feel about using this thing on the go. I do a lot of traveling, sometimes for international meetups or conferences and collaborations and stuff like that, and this device saves me. <laughs> but now let's talk about the performance of these devices. I ran two benchmarks, the first being the benchmarks that I ran on the Cintiq Companion 2s. Now, again, I'm not one for all the numbers and this and that, so I'm just gonna just show you my footage overlaid on the video right now of uh, the three devices benchmarking next to each other. You can see on the bottom left is the Cintiq Companion 2, the top is the Mobile Studio Pro 13 inch, and on the right is the 16 inch Mobile Studio Pro. Now, what I have observed is that the Cintiq Companion 2 and the Mobile Studio Pro 13 inch, not surprisingly, benchmark it around the same. Once again, that's because they have pretty much the same specs and stats, so no surprises there. 
But of course, in steps the 16 inch i7 Mobile Studio Pro and it whoops, especially when it comes to graphics processing. Now I ran the same Unigen Heaven benchmark that once again, I ran on the Cintiq Companion 2 versus the Cintiq Companion 1 video, this time running it on again, all three devices, the Cintiq Companion 2, the Mobile Studio Pro 13 inch and the Mobile Studio Pro 16 inch. I was a little bit shocked when I first ran the benchmark to see that the Cintiq Companion 2 ran the benchmark better than the other two, but of course, then I realized what the issue was. I was running them in native resolution. That meant that the Mobile Studio Pro 13 and 16 inches were running at a much higher resolution with up to quadruple the demand of the Cintiq Companion 2. So running the benchmark again, instead of course, all set to 1080p, you can see a marked difference here in performance, particularly of course, in the 16 inch i7 4 gig graphics card, Mobile Studio Pro, averaging at above 35 frames a second on this pretty demanding benchmarker. Benchmarks are fun to compare devices, but in terms of qualifying practical use, don't really make that much of a difference to me. What does make a difference to me is practical performance. Performance. So I wanted to test this thing and push it as far as it would go in its graphics processing capabilities. So I took it to a LAN party to see what games it could play. And here's what I found. It played Skyrim in 4K on ultra high settings, which is incredible and really cool. It was super smooth and ran at a high frame rate. Then there was Dota 2, which ran on 1080p on ultra high settings. And again, was stunning. It even played Overwatch, though that was a much more demanding game and didn't really work as well as I wanted it to until I set the graphics down to 720p. But that being said, this isn't a gaming device, but the fact that I can play all of these games and get a great result on, let me just, let me just show you this again, on this <laughs> is incredible. It actually blew my mind. And yes, granted that experience is colored somewhat by just the novelty and excitement of being able to do that, but I did spend the entire LAN party only gaming on the Mobile Studio Pro. And I bought my desktop as well and didn't use it. So that's just kind of cool and something to keep in mind. The fact that it is a functional mid-tier gaming laptop, essentially. I did hope against hope that this thing could run VR, even on the lowest settings. Unfortunately, the hardware is not compatible. So I'm looking forward to the Mobile Studio Pro 2 and uh, using Tilt Brush in that. But for now, that dream was a little bit crushed. Speaking of performance, battery is another one of those things that some people in other reviews have expressed as lackluster. I didn't expect anything different. Like I said, I've owned a Cintiq Companion 2 for a number of years and have relied on that and it had about two hours of battery life because I used it quite intensively. The Mobile Studio Pro was the same in all situations for me and I'm pretty used to working around that. And in fact, I've never found it to be a real inconvenience. Like I said, I plan my travels around it. So I charge the device when I'm using it in the airport. The charge is very fast and it's easy enough to just plug in and charge between travel points. So you do get a lot of use out of it, even though it has, I would say, two and a half average hours battery life when you use it very intensively. Keeping in mind, of course, that when I use it, I'm editing in 4K, I'm using graphics card assisted processing by using Photoshop in high resolutions and doing lots of rendering. So you can put it through its paces and still get a solid chunk of work done without it being plugged in. Just be aware and plan around those times where you won't have a plug accessible to you and just get a hold of one before or after your travel leg. And it can be pretty continually used through travels. The last thing I wanna cover before I get into my own experience and review is the price point. The 13 inch model ranges between $14.99 and $24.99. And that comes with its range of i5 to i7 and varying storage sizes and processing capabilities. And then we have the 16 inch models with the low end being 23 $3.99 and the high end being $29.99. The differences between those two I mentioned earlier, specifically the i5 or i7, the two gig or the four gig graphics card, the RAM being eight or 16 gig and the storage capacity. At the end of the day, the Mobile Studio Pro product is a premium product. So it's gonna have that in the price tag. And that being said, it's not a toy. So if you're a 13 year old looking at this review and thinking I want that thing, but it's too expensive, well, it's not aimed at 13 year olds. <laughs> However, if you are someone who has on the go needs or really wants that utility of having something that can be used for loads of different applications and have the grunt it needs on the go or in a studio setup, I can highly recommend the Mobile Studio Pro. Now I'm gonna go into my own experiences specifically 
basically again with the 16 inch high tier model that's the 29.99 version to get straight to the point if you're getting this thing i would also get one of the stands that I recommended, as well as the carry case that I mentioned that is an optional extra. I would also highly recommend getting the Wacom Bluetooth keyboard or an equivalent. I love the Wacom Bluetooth keyboard. It fits perfectly in the carry case and works perfectly with the device. So it's worth keeping that in mind. And I would get one of these things. This is called a smudge guard and it just lets your hand move smoothly across the screen and I use it all the time. So I don't like using a display tablet without a smudge guard. With those things covered, the utility that this thing provides as far as creative power on the go and providing utility in loads of different areas is beyond amazing. Yes, it's a high point of entry, but if you can reach that point of entry and it serves your needs, you will be satisfied. <laughs> While the 16 inch screen is a little large for some laptop carry cases, I find it perfect for creative use. I honestly found the Cintiq Companion 2 screen and by extension, the Mobile Studio Pro 13 inch screen to not quite be enough. I really want screen area when I'm working, whether it be painting in Photoshop, editing, or animating, having a bigger stage to work with and having a wider area for my hand to work with without cramping and working in small areas is a huge deal. I found its form factor a marked improvement over the Cintiq Companion 2. Not only is it a more enjoyable device to use because of the screen size, but it doesn't have that slightly plasticky feel that the Cintiq Companion 2 had and it feels really solid and like it can take plenty of wear and tear without being cumbersome or in any way bulky or heavy. As mentioned, I found the battery life to be exactly as I expected it. Uh, some may find that a con in a world where everyone's trying to get the biggest battery life possible, but honestly, I feel like a device like this is one that has to make compromises. If the designers of this device chose to favor performance over battery life, I am 100% okay with this because it's not useful to me to have a device that works for five or six hours and can't keep up with my working pace as opposed to something that will give me two hours of intense work. And that's what this does. If that battery life is a make or break for you, you can find workarounds for that as well. There are battery charging stations or packs that you can get. There are things that kind of like those charging blocks for phones do the same thing for laptops. and. There are ones out there I'm sure that are compatible with the Mobile Studio Pro, so go check them out. But all of that said, let's come to my personal final verdict for both of these devices, the 13 inch and the 16 inch. Who is the product for? It's, as I mentioned, for people on the go with high quality standards and production needs. You don't necessarily have to be always on the go to get your bang for your buck with this device. The utility it provides with a simple occasional train ride and for events when it comes to you using webcams and streaming and things like that is pretty invaluable, especially to someone with my kind of job. I mean, let's say for example, you work at a job you don't love and want to do your own thing for a living and you have an hour and a half commute both ways to work every day. Now that's an hour and a half of wasted time, but with a device like this, it makes the difference between wasted time and a potential future independent career. If you're someone who already has their work thing going on in the modern age of people living and working off of laptops, the accessibility and portability this thing brings is absolutely fantastic. So now there are two questions I get a lot, which I want to answer straight up. The first is, should I get a Cintiq desktop display tablet or a mobile studio pro? Again, that depends on your needs. If you work in a studio or are self-employed and work at home and have a decent enough desktop, I would recommend getting a desktop Cintiq Pro tablet over the Mobile Studio Pro. However, if you have a pretty flexible workflow and do find you move from A to B quite a lot, the Mobile Studio Pro really offers quite a lot. Then there are people who ask, should I get a Mobile Studio Pro or a Cintiq Companion 2? This again depends on your needs. I have found the years that I've used this Antique Companion 2 to be really enjoyable and it's kept up with me enough to get everything I needed done. However, I do work at a really intense pace and as my production value has increased and my traveling has increased, so have my needs in a portable device. And the Mobile Studio Pro 16 inch gives me what I need in a way that now the Cintiq Companion 2 
wouldn't. But it depends on your needs and if you have pretty low demands as far as grunt in your machine, I would recommend getting a Mobile Studio Pro 13 inch on the low tier as opposed to a Cintiq Companion 2 simply because of the future proofing and the Pro Pen 2 capabilities. However, if you have an intense workflow or high processing power needs and a production schedule that has you pinned down to some pretty tight timelines and schedules, I wouldn't get anything less than the best because it makes a huge difference to running a business. So once again, this thing is not a toy, but frankly, if you're gonna get this thing and it sounds like it's gonna meet your needs, I wouldn't settle for less than the 16 inch, specifically the high tier 16 inch with the better graphics card, which makes a huge difference in processing and rendering and on the go stuff. And of course, with the better RAM and storage, it's sort of a no brainer. But I can say in all honesty that once you have the device and you've worked around some of those minor inconveniences that I mentioned, there is nothing on the market that offers what this device offers and I can 100% stand by the quality and the impact that this has had on my business and creating content for you guys. I've made a huge amount of content on the go with this thing and no one yet has mentioned the difference between the content I make through this as opposed to the content I make through my home workstation desktop PC. So that brings me to the end of this review. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been useful to you. Once again, the links to the Wacom store and all of their products are in the description. And if this product is something that you've been considering, I really hope that I've helped inform you as much as possible. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed my review. And of course, subscribe to Draw With Jazza if you like having fun with art, join the arty party. And of course, I like to do things like this, occasional tech and product reviews that make a difference to artists and creators. Thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now and until next time, I'll see you later.